Right folks, so welcome back to another video. Uh, just in the M2 right now because we're going to be heading down to a Subaru specialist today. The reason we are not taking the lovely Impreza over there is because I don't fancy driving that thing an hour and a half on the motorway at the moment because I've run into a few little teething problems with it. The last video I did was the boring brake shoes over there. So that's all fine, that's resolved. The car holds. Uh, but what I noticed when I was taking the calipers off, I initially thought that the caliper bolts weren't torqued on right. I thought they were just loose. Then I realized the actual threads in the calipers are ruined. So, strange enough, one on each caliper, so all four, one bolt on each of them. For the back, it's got like a carrier, but the front, it goes straight onto the hub. Um, there's no thread on the bolt, so the calipers are loose. So, quite sketchy, I'll be honest. It does, the braking's not great on it either. So, if I take it on a motorway, I don't fancy doing an emergency stop at 70 and that thing because it's just a bit sketchy. We are going to be heading over to Scooby Clinic. A lot of you guys may have heard of them. They're one of the largest Subaru specialists in the UK. When we get there, because we're not going to be doing any direct video on the Impreza today, we probably filmed some of the builds they got there. There's probably a bunch of stuff there. I had a look online. This this is massive. I've already had a brief chat with them over Facebook about some of the plans I've got. So it should be all good. We'll get there, see what's what basically. Now i just got to go and drive. Alright folks, I think we're in a Chesterfield somewhere. I've never been here before, but looks all like countryside. I think this place is actually in the middle of a field somewhere. There's like a really long path leading up to it. <laughs> and we missed a turn. Scooby Clinic, making progress. Wildlife. Can see a Subaru logo just up ahead. Oh look, there's a there's a 22B in the back there. Right, so park the M2 over there, out the way. Don't know if it's a replica or real one but it's very convincing abandoned looking impreza here inside now there's there's literally so many impresas in here i can't even count so we'll just have a look at what's here you guys can see on camera nice mick of blue paint here need mine to look like that it's a bit far off yet we're here with dan by the way as well giving us a little tour of the clinic this is the dyno uh, everything all in house then pretty much pretty much yeah the mm. only thing we haven't got on site is a machine shop to be able to do yeah use a local firm for that. I noticed there was a body shop back there as well. Yeah, we've got um, two booths, we've got this side, um, yep. paint booth, the other side we use for valeting. Yep. We've got a jig, yep. um, obviously we do full repairs, not just flowing, it's full, full resprays. Full resprays. Uh, MLT welding, repair work. So that's one thing on mine that I actually, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, is a, this is a common thing on Ian Pretza Classics, is yeah. the, uh, the inner arches and outer arches going. Yeah, you only see a little bubble on the outside, but, but this the is inside. What's on the inside? That's interesting to see, um, actually, because when I pick mine up, you, I, supposedly the arches have been repaired. You know, yeah. like they have, they've been, they've been done. Like I checked the magnetic on the outside, so there's yeah. no filler, but they haven't been painted yet, so they've been left. Yeah. And there's like a, a protective. Of, a lot of people do the outer, um, yeah, but don't get onto the inner. Yeah. Which if, you, you can see this is obviously yeah, it's all just chewed up, isn't it? Yeah, we've literally just had mainly yeah. we're just bringing two rear quarters. Okay, yeah, complete rear quarters for it. Uh, Subaru that. genuine parts, complete box with even some Japanese writing on there as well. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> gonna get all the inner arches done. Yep, stripped down and then complete fresh outer arches. Um, yeah, and, it and, uh, and been a Terzo. Yep, quite a rare car, quite low mileage, so worth saving. Yeah, makes sense. I've never seen so many Impreza's in one place. <laughs> there were 79 on site a few weeks back. 79? <laughs> There's records yeah. over 100 in one go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think a lot of places are going to match that, basically. No, no, I say the buildings are uh, old, yeah. old farmhouse buildings, old barns, they yeah. um, So space is not yeah. a question. So this is the beast that we came to yeah, have a look at. Uh, this belongs to a chap called Wayne. It's quite creative looking this thing. Yeah, um, design and paint is all done by Wayne himself. He's got his own body shop. And right. As you'll see there, we've obviously we've got the, the front mount and the turbo on there. It's all custom headers. Uh, so they've been made in house. It's got a small uh, sump on there with a scavenge pump. Uh, that draws the oil back into the engine. 
yep. just from an exhaust system this, this long. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it 2.35 in this? Leaf? Yeah, 2.35. Yeah. 2.35 yeah, engine. Um, yep. Because of, because of manifolds, uh, it's got A injector set up. It's made for drag. What's the estimates then on this? Um, it's a bit of an unknown, but as an idea, at 0.85 bar mm. on V power. Yep. Um, it made 445 without even trying. Now it's got a, a bit of a funky fuel mix. <laughs> if you don't start with a 7, we're going to be really upset. <laughs> if you don't start with a 7. Yeah. Uh, this is Mark who does mapping here. Mark, yep. Uh, right. Cyrex Link. Yep. Uh, ECU Tech, Alcatech, if there are existing customers with them. Yep. <laughs> What's this Evo having done then? Uh, it's coming in for the mapping works, had a new turbo on it. Yeah, yeah I heard it's pretty, it's something special. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, uh, power wise, did about 6, 640 I think it was. 640. But uh, going for more this time. Going for more from 640. And then, I suppose once you've got the bug it doesn't end does it? Completely mid. Big blower. Big blower indeed. I noticed outside there was a, was it a 22B replica? It is, yes. It's very convincing though. Yeah, we've got the program molds, steel outer press molds on the walls there. Um, so they're the original ones from ProDrive. They would have the, the press, yep. and they'd press steel into it. Yep. And that would be the outside face of it. Now obviously we haven't got a press and we haven't got the inner mold, so we can't mm. press steel into them. Yeah. Um, but we've used those in the past to create fiberglass layers. Of an exact replica. It's just so much stuff here. It's hard to take it all in in one go, isn't there? Like, I was just looking online at different bits of Subarus and whatnot, and here is just everything. What's this then? Is so this, this, a... this is uh, belongs to Vaughan Fletcher. Um, okay. It was used in classic Thunder Saloons, which is kind of like a touring car thing. Won a few things over the years, held a few records at certain tracks. It's about 750 horsepower. 750? Yeah. Um, that's, on a, <laughs> that's on a race fuel mix, that's not on a, a pump fuel. Okay, um, even then sounds Still, the setup itself will probably do 650 on pump fuel. It's different types of builds here, isn't there? There's different variations. Yeah, the, the, builds, the builds are relative to the application, really. Yeah. So this is obviously built for circuit racing. Yep. Um, we've got, obviously, Wayne's is a drag car. We've got our own drag car that's um, X-World record holder. Is that the one over there at the end? Yeah, you want to have a one with him? So do you guys take on a lot of sort of rally style builds as well? Uh, we we do, I mean we, we work with the guys from RAF, um, yep. we've got one of the cars outside, the other one's back yeah. at Maru. Um, they've also piloted our old 12, uh, 22B uh, right. Help for Heroes, uh, that decommissioned and gone to a customer mm. now. So this was the drag car then? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is Mikey's. That was um, officially the fastest four cylinder manual transmission. Uh, silver in the world. In the world? Yeah. And oh. we got pipped by, I think it was a tenth of a second by some yeah. fella. Uh, uh, Greek, from Greece, from I think Greece. it was. Greece, yeah. But his timing gear wasn't official, so we oh. still may have the record. Yeah. But we're hoping to get it out this weekend and have yeah. another go at it. Yeah. You know, and see if we can get it back. 8.83 Eight. quarter mile at Eight. 160. He yeah. told us we've got to fit a parachute next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, so it's still in action, you're going to take Yeah, this. so that. that that record was broke at 620 horsepower. It's now 775. Nowadays, you barely even see one classic on the road, like a fully they're stock all one. Here. They're, they're, all, they're all here, that's why. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> structured, structured Cause some GBH with that diffuser. It's, it's chassis mounted, so it's, Just, it, it works. Yeah, that's the one. Which converted four door to two door. Um, oh, okay. Still got the, two door, uh, the four door doors there. So, yeah, the four door size door, yeah, I get that. Yeah. We've got something quite special in here, haven't we? Hint us an estate. Two door wagon. Two door wagon. But done properly. Done properly. So, this is essentially, yeah. it's got a 22B body kit on it. Yeah, so uh, it's 22B kitted. Um, yeah. But this is one we converted um, properly. So, the, the B pillar yes. and all the rear quarter was removed from a Type R. Yes. Um, seamed back in so original spot welds taken out the four door pillar yes and then uh, the two door pillar put back in so the door on this one compared to the one that we just looked at yeah you can tell us straight off the bat it's a lot longer uh, this is off a type r straight off a type r yeah uh, nice. that is the rear quarter window now the the line of the window is exactly the same as the one outside okay the length of it is exactly the same 
Yeah. Um, so instead of having a winding window in the rear, it's got the structured framework of the Type R that then makes up to the original rear quarter glass from so the wagon. It's quite a comprehensive <laughs> job. It's just so beefy seeing this 22B style, the arches of a 22B on an estate yeah. and the front. The of it, you can't tell as much in here, but you put it outside. Yeah. You can see the width, you can see how, how beefy and beautiful. Yeah. Only one in the world. Before I came here, I was on Scooby Clinic's Facebook page. I was scrolling through and I saw this thing. And actually, this is one of the main cars I wanted to come and see. So, I mean, 22Bs are 22B, but when you see an estate converted to look like one as well. Yeah, so, no, so, no engine or gearbox at the minute. Yep. It's just a dummy shell box like, at the moment. Um, just deciding what to put in. So, what's the, um, what do you reckon probably go in? Um, it's probably a few different ideas, isn't there? Yeah, we, we were thinking do we do an STI 8 engine? 2.1 stroker it, yeah. get it up to four or five hundred horse. Do we do a six cylinder single turbo? Yes. Do we do a six cylinder twin turbo? It's just, it's the options are endless yeah. only, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's an open book. Yeah. There's so many different plans that we could put in place. I think with, with this kind of car, to me anyway, it's just a like, straight away looking at it off the bat, you just, you're more concerned like when you look at this just how impressive it looks like you could have as much horsepower as it wants but when you look at this yeah you... i mean to, to me with this we could put a 2.1 sti8 engine that's been built yeah. in um, with a stock location turbo just have everything nice and pretty yeah. showcase the work that we can do and it it would still still get the same amount of attention because of how it looks yeah. And obviously it's the presentation work. If you look to this one here, this is a customer's one. Right. Um, this is a 2.1 single scroll, uh, twin scroll setup, so JDM car. Yeah. Um, we, did the, we did the build on it, and while the engine was out, he commissioned the engine bay to be painted. Right. So it's shiny, Yeah. where the original ones are like a, a satin matte finish. Yeah. Um, so he's gone for presentation on this one. Yeah. Um, Even though he's also had yeah. the exterior done now. Uh, we just repainted the whole car still a few little bits and bobs to finish on it yeah you could um, tell it's been down he's even got the, the roof hatch yeah, as well the roof flap in there as well he's in the fake flat foot <laughs> not genuine, <laughs> not genuine. <laughs> so it's um, nice to have you just stick but it's sticking up it's like yeah it looks yeah, cool yeah, and, uh, it's, it's all good until you do over 50 mile an hour and it's oh, does, to peel the <laughs> i didn't know that so yeah, yeah, we all put we all put one on ours then <laughs> if, you, if you read the, uh, the writing underneath, it's in Japanese, but it, it says something like 80 kilometers an hour. Oh. <laughs> oh, especially with all the power he's got, he's going to be hitting that yeah, quite easily. I mean, this, this made about 450. Yeah. Um, I say it like it's not a lot, but some of the stuff is yeah. 450 is the average. When stuff you see stuff like this every day when you're here, you get desensitized yeah. to four or 500 horsepower. Yeah. I can understand, so we, yeah. We had a guy come up um, a couple of days ago and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe what you've got on site. Yeah. Normal. It's normal, yeah. yeah. It's like me. I've, I've you hardly I see like one classic every few months on the road. Mm. Like before I got mine, where I see it every day, and then like come here and there's like it's nothing. There's just loads. loads. Let's have a look around the back of this thing. Isn't it? Yeah. Got the two spoilers. Yeah, the original STI uh, wagon spoilers are on there. Quite. A they're fine the arches it just changes the whole car so yeah. it's just you know like these you put this on a normal body this state yeah yeah it look cool but when you see it combined with them just like here going into the box arches exhaust as well there yeah, attached. It's just a, a dummy exhaust dummy right? exhaust yeah. at, least, at least it looks cool though yeah it, it doesn't sound very good it though. might end up with twin exits because we're going to put a flat six in it okay so a flat six might be on the agenda yeah it's on the agenda we sent it for closed egg blocking so okay yeah, yeah. We've got fully forged pistons, rods, and everything. So yeah. we might as well make it something special. It's yeah. been, you know, it's been around for such a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's worth doing it properly now. Of course, yeah. Some shows, you know, yeah, definitely. What we can do. It's a couple of grand's worth of suspension on it alone. Yeah. Um, again, interior-wise, it's not going to function very well because it's even though it's a wagon. Yeah. It's got a climbing frame in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you ain't going to be putting no, um, it's not for practically nah, the most no, performance. There'll be no back seats. No. Nah. Um, it's got the harness bar as well, so they can use the uh, the harnesses on it. Yeah. Um, wrap rounds instead, yeah. of, instead of bolting them to the chassis. So the dash is going to be a very simplistic one. Yeah, um, the, um, obviously being, being sort of Northern Office for Cyvex as such. Yeah, uh, we're looking potentially to put something like a uh, Cyvex Plex dash in it. No real need for a, a genuine dash. So we've got a, nah. a dash blank. Uh, yeah, 
obviously going to do a custom uh, custom dash in there, um, yeah. switch panels and things. Um, mm. We can fabricate his own loom in house. Yeah, everything can be done to to spec basically. Yeah, yeah. Build it, build it for purpose. Build yeah. it to function as it should do. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we've got the cars that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've got the the Jim Carner cars. Okay. Yeah. Um, we we did a BRZ for Dimitri. Um, right. That's out in Poland at the minute. Right. Uh, he's got both his BRZ and his GC8 out there. Yeah. There's also uh, Bucky's Hawkeye out there as well, competing in the uh, Monster Energy Jim Connor grid final. Right. Um, the BRZ was bare. There was no wiring whatsoever. Right. Um, so we've got the, the car loom separate, um, mm. fuse box, switch panel, everything done in the car. Uh, so you've got indicators, brake lights, reverse lights. Everything yep. works as it should for a road car. Right. Um, all done in house. Yep. It's then got a custom wiring loom for the Cyvex S6i ECU that's in there. Um, mm. and that's also got a Plex SDM dashboard. Yeah. Um, so it's all race dash. Full Subaru toolkit. Yep. Not even a dealer if I that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all on the wall there. Everything. There's more doors. More doors. Looks all very technical in here. Yeah, this, uh, this is the engine build area. And okay. The engine's gearboxes. Yeah, version 2 STI RA gearbox in the process of being refreshed. Right. Um, that's going to go in the white one that's outside. The engine yeah. for that, I just want to quickly jump back it out. That's the engine that's there. The, that's the engine for the STI RA, so it's gone back to the original spec, the Ford Piston and the TD05. Yep. Um, it's all been done. It's ready to go back through to the workshop to be installed. And it's just a gearbox as well then is going to... Gearbox, we're just uh, trying to sort out the centre diff because it's a DCCD box. Yeah. Uh, the plate's on a different one. Mm. Um, so I'm just trying to source some new plates to make it work properly. Should we have a look at the uh, 22R outside? Yes. <laughs> as it's badged. We shall have a look at the 22R. So this was a Type R2 door. Converted Type R Converted then. Converted with 22V uh, arches from the rear. Yep. Bumpers, side skirts. 22B spoiler, Two. deep in your pockets yeah. if you want one of these. Definitely worth a few quid. To find them. Um, over a grand if you can get one second hand. Yeah, if you could get one, I if guess so. that's the key one. thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you, if you look on here, so we've got the 22 and then R, yep. and then this one's number three. So we've we've done, I believe, five of these all together. Okay. Um, this one's the third one. Yeah. Uh, currently belongs to Pat Herborn, who's the Mr. Cyvex, Pat the Map as he's known. Mr. Um, Cyvex. This is this is his particular one. Um, right. It's running STI8 engine, uh, just over 400 brake, Cyvex ECU, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Just took it off his shelf and put it Did in. Did put it in, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ironic thing is, this is Pat from Cyvex's car. Yeah. Maps by Mark. Okay. <laughs> um, he didn't map his own car. Did he? <laughs> that says a lot about Mark's map. Yeah. Pat, obviously. Yeah. Pat's taught him over the years. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's put his trust in him with his own car. So yeah. that to me says a lot about how Mark's uh, mapping skills yeah. are. Yeah, hopefully we'll uh, get to experience some of that work when you bring the Impreza down. Yeah. The plan is to bring the Impreza down once I've you know, dealt with the, the fact that I need to bring it here. It's about an hour and a half away, but it's, the drive's quite nice. But just need to check those caliper bolts out and make sure it's safe, otherwise I might just get a trailer here. But the car runs as you saw in the previous video. But in terms of what we got planned, um, we're thinking maybe do like an inspection video first. Yeah, uh, we offer a health check, which is a full-on wrap check over uh, brakes, suspension, steering. Um, yeah. Just basically check it over completely, make sure yeah. it's all good to go, if there's anything that needs addressing or it's going to wear out soon yeah uh, we, we advise on that kind of like an MOT but a lot more in depth um, yeah you just don't get a fail sheet you might get a sheet of things that need addressing yeah um, we then if we're confident from the check over that it's good enough to go on the dyno and run uh, we'll do a diagnostic power run uh, yeah we, we plug the laptop in we run it through Subaru select so we can see live data yes um, run it see what power it's making see how healthy it's running what all your sensors and components are doing while the car's running mm. um, that'll give you a printout of what power and torque boost and fuel it's making yep after that we can have a chat see what's see what needed we can... what plans you've got for the car yeah uh, whether it be maintenance or upgrades um, yes and then obviously you take it from there yeah that'd be sound <laughs> This 
then I'll paint them. Then I oh, do. Yeah. Well, you're on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's laughing at. This is Dave. This he's is actually not Dave. It's Chris. But this is Chris. Dave. Chris every, or Dave. Every garage has a Dave. Well, his name's Chris. Really. <laughs> well, his name's Chris. <laughs> this is where the engine builds are done. Um, the room is temperature controlled. Um, yeah. All the, all the components are kept in here for a couple of days prior to build, so they're all at the same temperature. Yes. Um, the reason for that is when you are building the engine together mm. and you're checking tolerances and clearances, um, if you've got one component that's warm versus one component that's cold, mm. your measurements will be out because the variation in expansion of metal, um, yeah. so we keep everything together in the same temperature. Yeah. So when you measure it, it's, it's the same. Yeah. Um, so you get your clearance is perfect every time. Every engine is literally blueprinted, checked, weighed, measures, um, all the all the components. So com rods. Um, just as an example here, we've got a closed deck converted block. Um, mm. This is a 2.5 engine. Yeah. Uh, overboard 99.75. 7.45, 7 7.44, 7.46, Each piston is also measured and weighed. So we'll have the weights and um, the, obviously the board uh, relative to the cylinder they're going in. Mm -hmm. um, they're also weighed as well to make sure the balance is correct on the engine. So you've not got an imbalance, more weight to one side or mm -hmm. anything like that front to rear. Um, he also does the same with the comrades, just got some calculations of his on the post-it pad here. Yep. Um, so they're all, all weighed as well, so you got um, the cap is weighed separate and then obviously the bearings themselves weighed as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can balance the engine on the bench as, as best possible so you don't get any, any uh, harmonics on it. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes with massive builds we will send off the crankshaft, the flywheel, the clutch and the front pulley mm -hmm. and get those balanced individually so mm. that, that whole rotating mass is, is balanced evenly in the engine. Uh, this is Andy. Hello Andy. How are you doing Andy? Uh, he's been here a long time. 16 years. 16, 16 years. years. A lot of the staff that work here have all been here 10 years plus. Mark yeah. the engine builder, he's been here from day one. All right. 16 years. years. Seen a lot of Subarus then. Over the 16 years. Quite a few. Really. Quite a few, yeah. <laughs> a lot of experience and it's in-house experience. It's not specifically from like yeah. horses or anything. Yeah, when you're working on these cars day in, day out, you get to know them like the back of your hand. Mm -hmm. um, which is good because obviously that can speed up the process of resolving a problem. Yeah, because you will have seen other examples where it's the Correct. same thing, yeah, yeah, rather than a completely different car, yeah. which you have to then learn that car and apply it. And it's, it's a... Yeah. Um, so the, the, the guys know a, a fair bit between them. Um, mm -hmm. There's not much that we don't know um, mm. in house. It's, it's yeah. obviously it's different people have got different levels of expertise across different areas. Combine that in one place. Yeah, I mean, I just but, the whole the fact that you just got everything under one roof is. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's for want of a better term, it's a single point of failure. So if we're yeah. doing the work on a car, mm -hmm. something's not right. You just go to that part of the workshop. Yeah. We, we've done a whole job, yeah. so it's, it's us that know yeah. the car, we know what to look for. Because if you're trying to diagnose someone else's work where they've done something wrong... or Yeah, you know, we've had it in the or... past with customers where they've, the engine's been took out of the mate's garage, they've then sent it off to somebody to do a rebuild on it, mm -hmm. it's been sent back, somebody else has installed it, then they go for yeah. something else to be fitted and then it comes for mapping. Mm -hmm. We get it on the dyno and something's not right, so customer yeah. rings the last guy that dealt with it and he points the finger at the guy yeah. the engine. So it's one of those things. Down for this guy and <laughs> everybody does this. <laughs> with here, it's sort of yeah. like, you see now. So yeah, no, I see. If there's a problem, yes. it's down to us and we will resolve it in house. Yeah, um, best way. Right, folks, anyway, that was a, a tour of Scooby Clinic. Big thanks to Kevin, also Dan, for giving us a tour. I actually just came back to the car because I came to just quickly pick up this battery here got it out of the side pocket and dropped it and look the fins bent so yep i'm on six percent battery right now m2 is looking very clean hope you enjoyed today's video make sure you do drop a like if you did enjoy it hopefully we'll be back here very soon with the subaru and uh, get some work done need to start first we're getting the brakes how called simple things matter first uh we're going to bring it back for the inspection but yeah guys just stay tuned for a lot more content to come and i'll see you in the next one